How's it going guys? So in the last tutorial, I showed you my way of uh, looping animations, looping textures, and today I'm going to show you how to take that idea and we're going to make this really cool, really simple organic loop. If you want the project file for this, you can get it in the description for a dollar. Everybody on Patreon tier one, you'll be getting that for free. If you don't know about the Patreon, you get two exclusive tutorials a month. These two animations you're seeing right now I taught in April and you can grab that on the Patreon right now. You also get project files from tutorials and monthly procedural materials created by Syncretic 3D. Uh, last month he created these really amazing crystals and created the procedural materials for that. You can check that out along with everything else linked in my description. Now let's get into the tutorial. All right, cool. So today we're going to be making this really cool and quite simple animation. Um, you can do it here in Eevee if you want. It's not going to be displaced in Eevee. You'll just have to use a bump node uh, instead of the displacement node you'll see in the tutorial. So just those of you Eevee users. Uh, but we'll be making this in cycles and I'll show you how to make this really, really quick to render as well. I only used uh, 100 samples, so super, super easy. But let's go ahead and make a new file and we're gonna go straight into making this. So shift A, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use an isosphere. So I'm gonna hit subdivide and then I'm gonna get this smoothness up and the number of cuts all the way to 10. Now I'm gonna go ahead and shade smooth. In the modifiers, I'm gonna go ahead and get a subdivision surface. So right up here on the little camera icon, we're gonna switch straight here to cycles and let's go ahead and make that in the shading. So like I did in the other tutorial, if you haven't seen it, um, I'll be just be basically recreating it. But um, for those of you who've seen it, you know what's about to happen. So uh, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to get a color ramp here, C-O-L, color ramp, so we can actually visualize what we're about to animate. And then we're going to go ahead and get a wave, W-A-V-E, wave texture, get the color, put it right here into the factor. So I'm going to go here and get constant just so we can get an easier way of viewing this animation. So we're gonna go ahead and loop the texture right now um, in the nodes here. So I'm gonna bring up a timeline, click this, click timeline. I'm gonna give myself 120 frames. Now the more frames, the uh, slower your animation will be. So if this, you know, if this animation is too quick for your liking, you can just add more frames. Now I'm gonna go here to my edit preferences and then in animation, I'm gonna make sure my default interpolation is set to linear. I'm gonna go ahead and get here the phase offset. And so what I'm gonna do, the way I make sure this thing will loop perfectly is I look here right at the center of the circle and I try to see right here, this little piece that we're seeing, I try to get it as small as possible. So I'm gonna hold down shift to make this, this uh, movement smoother right there. So that looks like it's about as small as it's going to get. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the uh, back arrow to start at frame zero right click on phase offset, insert keyframe, and then I'm gonna go and say right here on the phase offset, one, two, three, four. I think four um, phases is pretty good for me. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get that back to as small as this little circle will be. And that's what's gonna make sure that this is gonna be a perfect loop. I'm holding down shift to make it as smooth as possible, insert keyframe. So now if we watch it, it's just doing its phases and then perfect seamless loop here. Now, what I'm gonna do is add in another uh, node, but first, instead of constant, we're gonna go back here. I believe we're gonna use B spline, just so we get these really smooth edges and you'll, re you'll see why in just a second. But now we have this. I'm gonna go ahead and get in a noise texture. I'm gonna plug this factor here into the vector and now we have all this craziness. I'm gonna bring my detail down and uh, roughness isn't going to do anything. So we'll bring our scale something like this. And now if we press play, we have this really cool animation. I mean, it's not, it's not really cool just yet. So I'm gonna to, to uh, remove this timeline so we have more space to play with. I'm gonna click the cycles button here. Now there's no lighting, so we're just gonna get some quick lighting. I'm gonna hit this drop down and click scene world scene light. So we just get one of those default HDRIs so we can just see what we're working with. Now, what I'm gonna do here is get an a displacement node. So I'm gonna bring the material output down here just for organization. 
and I'm going to type in, I'm going to search, shift A, search DIS, displacement, plug the displacement right here, and I'm going to plug the, um, the uh, wave, the color ramp here, straight into mid-level. Boom. Now we have something pretty cool already. And then you can also flip the color ramp if you'd like, just really whatever you want to do. So now we're still looking at bump. We're not actually looking at displacement. Uh, and that's reason being we haven't actually done that in the settings. So making sure that you are in the cycles render engine, I'm going to click on the material icon here. And then I'm going to go down here to settings. And then right here, it says bump only go to displacement and bump. And now it's actually displacing, but it's displacing way too much. So here on the scale, I'm going to give it 0 0.2. And now it's doing that. Now you can see how it's kind of ugly and jagged edges. First off, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove the color ramp from the base color. I just want one color here for the displacement. So you can see how it's just really jagged. So to remove that, that would be in your levels viewport. So you can kind of adjust it depending on what your computer can handle. I'm going to keep my levels of the viewport at one. Now in render, I put mine at four. What that's going to do is to give you a perfectly smooth render when you actually render it, um, because this is how it's gonna render and this is how it previews here for you. So it's really easy to preview, really heavy render. Um, so that'll give you something really nice. So I'm gonna go back here into my settings and you can kind of play with the way this is going to look. Uh, I'm gonna go back and see how this is I'm going to put my levels here on the viewport at three just to really preview. Okay, so this is looking really, really cool. I'm going to leave it at that. We already know that in the uh, animation, it is going to loop. It's really smooth. It's really nice. So now we're going to go back here to layout and start actually lighting the scene. So I'm going to hit the tilde key for me, which is right above the tab and click front. I'm going to hit shift A and add a plane. And then I'm going to hit RX 90. What that's just going to do is just going to rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis. I'm going to hit the tilde key again, shift A and get a camera and bring my camera back here. So I'm going to hit zero. What I like to do here is in the camera settings here, I'm going to go here to 85 on the focal length. And that's going to give you a nice flat, very uh, sort of camera looking view. So I'm here I'm going to hit S8 on the size of that to make it nice and big fill up the scene and give you a nice uh, background. So now let's go ahead and start lighting this. So I'm going to go here to the rendered view and uh, hit shift A and we're going to get a area light. So here I'm going to bring this up and I'm going to bring it to the to the uh, right here. In the shape here I'm going to give it a disc. I'm going to scale it up pretty big maybe bring it over a little bit more and then in my camera view I'm just going to hit R, the R key do that. I'm going to bring my power up to be something right around there. Looks pretty good. And then um, I'm going to bring this up a little. I'm hitting G, bring it up a little bit more. And then I'm going to hit Shift D. And I'm going to bring it over right here to the left. I'm going to hit R to rotate it just like that. I'm going to see is it rotated correctly? Yes. Making sure it's hitting that. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click this guy. I'm going to hit shift D, bring it all the way up here to the center, hitting G and go to the center and then to the left, I'm hitting R twice to rotate it. And then this guy is going to be pretty big, something like this. So we get nice, really soft lighting. And then now you can kind of adjust how bright you want your lights to be. So I want this one to, to be a little bit brighter here, make it sort of the main light. This really big one can come up a little bit more to kind of fill in those shadows and this right here make it dark so you get these really dark shadows here. Uh, now we're just going to go and add a really simple principled uh, material. So right on this back one I'm going to click on this wall and I'm going to hit this little drop down and click this material here. Click a new material. Um, if there's no material on it just click new. I'm going to give it just a baby blue texture, baby blue color. I'm going to click on the hex. I'm going to hit control C, copy that hex code. I'm going to click on this guy and on the base color, I'm going to paste that hex code. Now you can do whatever colors you want. It really doesn't matter. So now that we're back into here, I'm going to go ahead and bring this light on the side a little bit brighter. And then here, this front light, make him a little bit brighter as well. Maybe that's a bit too much. 
something like this. And then if we click, click the render button, just to preview how this is going to look, we're gonna go now into making this render as fast as possible. So this is how my render looks. So you can see how there's no jagged edges. It's perfectly smooth. It's really nice. There's some weirdness happening here, but I don't really mind it. So now how do we make this render as quickly as possible? So I'm going to go ahead and give my render at 85 uh, samples. That's really, really low. But the thing is, this is really smooth shading, just a simple principle with uh, default roughness. So noise can actually go away pretty quickly. Um, and then if we go down here to light paths, I'm gonna give my total at five, and then everything on here, give it a, a one. And then down here, turn off reflective, turn off refractive. So that's all sitting there. Now, let's go ahead and do a little bit of denoising if you don't want, because there will be some noise in your shadows. So right here, I'm gonna click on denoising data. And then here in the compositing tab, we're just gonna do a little bit of stuff here. So click new, I'm gonna hit shift A and click on viewer, V-I-E, viewer, do that. I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna hit shift, right click and um, do that. So now what everything we put here, we'll go into the composite and the viewer for our animation. So I'm gonna hit shift A and get a D noise right here. And then we'll just get the uh, noisy image, noisy normal, noisy albedo, and then let's just render it one more time and see how quick that goes. All right, so it took me 10.3 seconds to render this one frame here in Cycles, which is super, super fast. If you wanna use Cycles X, uh, everything here should be compatible with that. It would probably double your speed. Uh, so this is really, really easy to render, really quick to render, and let me show you how to export this guy. So you'll click on the little printer icon, You'll click this button right here and to save wherever you want it. If you want to do a PNG sequence, which when rendering in cycles, I highly recommend. But if you just want Blender to compile a MP4 for you so you don't have to worry about an image sequence, click on FFmpeg video on encoding, select um, MP4 on medium quality, select perceptually lossless, and then you can click render, render animation, and you'll be done. And when you finish, you'll have a really cool animation that looks like this. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.